I'm out here gathering things to make a smeltery because Tinker's Construct for Minecraft 194 was just released. I realize a lot of people may be tired of watching the Tinker's Construct progression, but there's actually a lot that has been added since 1710 Minecraft. There's actually an entirely new material trait system, which is really awesome. I don't think I'll be able to get into every little tiny detail. I'll try to explain everything as best I can as I progress. Here I've crafted the crafting station, tool station, part builder, stencil table with a pattern chest in between the stencil table and the part builder. This sort of acts like a multi-block structure now. When you click one part of the multi-block, you have access to everything, which is definitely going to save a ton of time. Okay, so it looks like our grout has finished. And now we have some seared bricks. I actually plan on moving soon, so I'm not going to make it too big. I'm just going to make it big enough to make some basic tools to get started out with. Go ahead and put our controller there and put one drain here and another there. We have a smeltery, awesome. It looks like I found a little bug. The faucets aren't rendering, so. Oh, there we go. They just weren't rendering in my inventory. Now all we need is some lava. There we go. I'm going to get started with making my first pickaxe, which right now is only going to be used to mine the nether ores that I'm off to get. So what's cool is you can actually replace parts. Didn't even realize that the durability was at 10. Goes up to 120 with this rod, so yeah. Definitely much better. Gold's ready to make casts. What I am going to do, though, is make a sharpening kit. Combine our tool with our steel sharpening kit and a piece of flint. And now we have a stone pickaxe that can mine obsidian. F 
for some reason, I thought that Ardite was mineable with steel, but apparently I was wrong. So I'm just going to go ahead and make an obsidian sharpening kit. Okay, I'm back. I'm gonna get some of this stuff ready, going in the smeltery. Start making some tools, and I'll let you know what they do once I'm done making them. cobalt tool rod on my pick as well as a binding and what this does is it adds the lightweight trait which increases the overall speed so that's going to give us plus 20 percent speed so what magnetic does is it just it acts like a magnet pulling items in as you mine them Petromore makes it so every now and again, as you're mining stone, it will repair some of the durability on the tool. Momentum makes it so the more you mine, over time, your mining speed will increase. But if you stop, the timer will reset. What this does is every now and again, I think it's a chance that you'll either get extra durability or lose a little extra durability. Writable again. It just adds one extra modifier slot on your tool. Basically just a lumber axe that can be repaired by, with stone. It's just a fast axe that can be repaired with iron. Also has the uh, magnetic effect on it. So the only thing I'm really worried about modifying at the moment is my hammer. And I'm going to be adding two reinforcement plates onto it, as well as some haste right off the bat, which will give it a speed boost. I'm just going to add a diamond, which will increase its durability, as well as its mining speed a little bit. And it's basically just a minor stat boost to everything. Just going down to the mines to test out how well this hammer does. The hammer, as many of you know already, mines a 3x3 three three area. But the cool thing about this hammer is it's pretty much self repairing. So right now I've got. 918 durability out of 952. 
Now I've got 921, and I just mined a bunch. And even if we did need to repair this at some point, we could just repair it with paper. I'm preparing for a move. We're finally moving out. We're getting away from this place at last. I'm sick of the grass color. I found myself a slime island as well as a place to build. Look how awesome this looks. Before we set up base, let's go check out what's up there. Yay, we got a sapling. Nice. I think I'm starting to master this. So I think I'm going to start setting everything up. So, looks like the move is done. I've gotten everything set up pretty much exactly the same way it was before, minus the wheat farm, which I will set up. Right now I'm just watering our, our canola farm with an extra utilities watering can, because extra utils was released. This process does work, but it's definitely not the fastest. And as I mentioned last time, there's a flower from Batania that's going to be a big help in this process. The flower pouch will hold all of your Batania flowers as you go and collect them all.
If you're having trouble finding flowers, make floral fertilizer. I crafted a petal apothecary earlier on, so I'm going to take advantage of that. The pure daisies are really cool flowers that, when placed next to them, convert logs into living wood, smooth stone into living rock, which both of these materials are used for essential Batania item crafting recipes. A good way to quadruple your flowers or petals, place your petal on the ground, bone meal it, and then shear it. It effectively quadruples your petal output. So we've got the fluid placer and the fluid collector. Ease of access water collector. Finally starting to craft the first mana generating flower. So in Batania, there really are just two types of flowers. There's flowers that generate mana and flowers that do things, which are called functional flora. So I think that's enough for now. I just got 13 day blooms and these will generate mana through photosynthesis. It will absorb sunlight and generate mana but they will decay over time. I'm not sure if you still have to do this alternating pattern with the new system, but I did it anyways, just because I'm not totally sure. Okay, um, officially generating mana. What's happening is the mana from these flowers are getting absorbed by the mana spreader. And then as soon as a burst that's strong enough gets built up in the spreader, it shoots into this mana pool right here. And I'm actually gonna make something that will help to visualize this whole process. You wander the forest. There it goes. While it's all well and good generating mana from these flowers, it's definitely not the most efficient way. We're going to want to make a flower that will generate more mana and also won't decay. So, I've made myself six endoflames. These generate mana through fuel sources. I 
I finally got everything I need to make my first rune. Nice. I've got an Agricarnation, and this is useful in that when placed near crops, it applies a growth tick to it every now and again. So this is going to speed this process up by a little bit. But for now, I think this is really all I can spare the mana to support. I've made a little system here where from my chopper above ground, items get exported and they go to this chest as the first priority. And I filled everything with dirt here because I only want so much in this chest at one time. And if this gets overfilled, all the extras go into this chest. So the logs go into this furnace, which is now powered by RF and everything gets smelted into charcoal. I've got eight efficiency upgrades in there, so I'm not wasting so much RF. And everything gets exported into this chest, which is full of dirt again, because I don't want to be making too much. Just a simple automatic charcoal thing going on here, so I can start giving my endo flames constant fuel, so I can start getting some automated mana generation going. The automatic precision dropper is going to be really helpful in automating these. Right now it's not totally automated, I still have to go up and down stairs to pick up the charcoal, but all I gotta do is toss the charcoal in. The endo flames will suck the charcoal up. If there's nowhere for the charcoal to go, it will activate this pressure plate here and deactivate the precision dropper. I had a lot of fun today. We did some stuff with tinkers, we worked on automating everything, 
Admittedly, this still isn't the most efficient power generation, but you know what, I've never done it before and I've had a lot of fun while doing it. I may even need to get a coal generator going, because I think even that would be faster than <laughs> what this is right now. As I said, it was fun, and there is a lot more fun stuff to come, so stay tuned. <laughs>